What's up guys, I'm James, and welcome back to the Great Gambino channel. We are looking at something a little different today. This is the Wolverine Movie Maker Pro 8mm and Super 8mm film converter to digital 1080p. Recently, I have began converting my grandfather's old home films that he shot from the 50s through the late 70s. Converting these over was special to me because my grandfather passed away when I was around 9 years old. Coincidentally, I began filming videos and making home movies myself around that same age. So using this piece of equipment allowed me to look into my family's past and a familiar hobby my grandfather and I shared. But I digress. Let's move on to talking about the Wolverine Digital Film Converter. If you flip around to the back of the box, Wolverine provides some features which include a fully automated apparatus to digitize 8mm and Super 8mm movies up to 9 inch reels, frame by frame digitizing for high quality digital output standalone machine that does not require computer or software, scans and directly saves digital movies into SD and SDHC cards, converts movies into MP4 digital movie files at 1080p 20 frames per second or an option of 30 frames per second, compatible with all Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems, and playback of the digital movies to TV using the included TV cable. Turning the box on its side, we see a list of the content included. You will receive a user manual, a blower brush that can be used to clean dust from the film tray and lens, two reel adapters, a pickup reel, a 12 volt power adapter, one TV out cable, one USB cable, and the Movie Maker Pro device. You can see here in the shot that the item has been used quite a bit already. On the reverse side, we find the SD card slot that is used to digitally capture your files. Wolverine makes multiple converter models. There are some more affordable ones that convert to 720p and can be found for around $299. Then there is this model here, which is the 1080p converter, and it will usually run you around $400. The Movie Maker Pro is made from a combination of metal and plastic parts. When picking it up, it feels like it has some weight to it, but an overall compact design. There are two different types of film that you can run through this machine, 8mm and Super 8mm. Page 3 in the instruction manual shows you an example of how you can differentiate the two based on the shape of the sprocket holes, rectangular for 8mm and square for Super 8mm. Here's what the actual film looks like, with the 8mm on the top and the Super 8mm on the bottom. Once you figure out what type of film you're working with, you want to make sure you set the switch to the correct setting. Loading the film is very easy. There's a guided pathway on the front of the Wolverine that you can follow to thread up your movie. You will need to pull back the open lever to pop the tray. Once it is open, you will see three white guides that the film will need to be tucked underneath when feeding it through. I will show you what that looks like. When this is complete, you can reclose the tray. Now you are going to continue to thread up the film following the remaining guidelines. You will need to feed the slack into the slot of the pickup reel. Make sure to spool it once or twice so it holds securely, and then you are able to attach it to the receiving end. If you hit menu, you will be able to shuffle up and down through many different options such as record, playback, rewind, exposure, sharpness, USB, frame adjustment, language, format, default setting, film type, and software version. Once you have your film loaded and you are ready to record, press the power button to turn on the machine. It will automatically load the first frame. From here, all you have to do is hit enter and the device is going to ask you to make sure you have the correct film type selected with the lower switch. We have already set that up, so we are going to press enter one more time to begin recording. Keep in mind, it has to capture one image at a time, so this is a very slow process. Sometimes the film can get stuck and you will have to help by giving it a gentle pull to keep it going. Real quick I want to show you something that I did not know originally. When you are running film, occasionally you will notice that the frames are not lining up correctly and part of the next frame will start to bleed in on the current frame. To correct this, you want to stop the film, press the menu button, find frame adjustment, and hit enter. It will allow you to adjust the X and Y axes. So depending on what you need to adjust to make your correction, you will use the enter button to shuffle through X, Y, and W. When you are on the correct one, you will be able to click the up and down arrows to make the necessary adjustments. This is what it looks like when it's no longer aligning correctly and the bottom frame is beginning to bleed in. You would be able to use the arrows to bring it back down and get things where you need. Hopefully this helps some of you out. Lastly, I will show you how the rewind function works. If you notice, I switched the two reels around on the device. And this time, you are going to follow the dotted guideline on the machine, avoiding threading the film onto the tray because we don't want the resistance. It will also miss and overpass the knobs, giving a clear pathway to the original reel. Once this is set, you hit the power button, 
Tap the menu, arrow down two spots to rewind, click enter. It's going to tell you to remove the film from the light table, which we already did, and then press enter one more time. I have noticed sometimes that it gets stuck and you will need to remove the film from this first knob, then it starts moving steadily. I personally do not like doing it this way, so I'm going to stop the machine and show you another method. I prefer to thread it under the first and third position, and then I use a chopstick to manually spin it with the machine off. I find this method much faster, but keep in mind you are risking damaging the film, so please be careful if you choose to use this method. As you can see, I am able to finish rewinding the film and I'm good to go. Here's an example of some previously converted footage. Overall, I'm really satisfied with this product for in-home personal use. I don't think I would recommend it for going into business and converting other people's films on a regular basis. I'm not sure if it would hold up or is meant to run thousands of films. It seems more like something you should purchase if you have a few boxes of films that you need to convert. It definitely gets the job done, but I don't think it would be as good as going to a professional film conversion house. With that said, this solution would most likely save you a lot of money in comparison. But that's going to wrap up this review of the Wolverine Movie Maker Pro. Thank you for sticking around all the way until the end of the video. Video. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.